We're told the function f is defined by the equation above, right over here. Which of the following is the graph of y is equal to negative f of x in the xy plane? Pause this video and see if you can work through that. All right, now let's work through this together. So first of all, let's think about what y is equal to negative f of x is equal to. Well, that's going to be the negative of the right-hand side over here. So this is going to be, we could write it as negative 1 third to the x. And then if we distribute the negative, it'll then be plus 1. Or we could even write it like this. This is the same thing as 1 minus 1 third to the x. Now there's two ways that you could approach it. You could think about the behavior of this expression as x becomes very large or x becomes very small. Another possibility is we try a table with some easy values. So let me start actually with the table method right over here. So let me just try some easy x's to calculate and figure out what the corresponding y is when y is equal to negative f of x. So one easy one would be, well, we could try 0, but we could see every one of these graphs have the point 0, 0. So that won't really help us differentiate between the graphs that well. But let's try the point 1, and let's try the point negative 1. And those are useful because they're pretty easy to calculate. So let's see. When x is equal to 1, 1 third to the first power is just 1 third. 1 minus 1 third is 2 thirds. Now when x is equal to negative 1, what's 1 third to the negative 1 power? Well, that is equal to 3. And so 1 minus 3 is equal to negative, negative 2. Now let's see, just by inspection, if we can tell which of these graphs contain these two coordinates. So 1 comma 2 thirds. So 1 comma 2 thirds. That looks about right. So this one is looking pretty good. B, 1 comma 2 thirds. This is definitely larger than 2 thirds, so I would rule that one out. 1 comma 2 thirds. This looks like negative 2 thirds, so I'd rule C out. 1 comma 2 thirds. Definitely nothing right over here, so I'd rule D out. So A is already looking pretty good. But let's just confirm negative 1, negative 2. Negative 1 looks like the point. Negative 2 is there as well. So I'm feeling very good about A. And you could even check negative 1, negative 2. The graph doesn't go through there. Negative 1, negative 2 doesn't go through there. Negative 1, negative 2 does not go through there. So we really like choice A. Another way that you could have thought about it is when x is very negative, when x is very negative, 1 third to a very negative power is the same thing as 3 to a very large power. And so you'll have 1 minus. 3 to a very large power, well, 3 to a very large power is going to be a, a large value. So 1 minus that is going to be a very negative value. So when x is very negative, your graph should get very negative. And this one checks that box. As x gets more and more negative, this graph is just really getting more and more negative. And then as x gets larger and larger and larger, more and more positive, well, 1 third to larger and larger positive exponents is just going to get closer and closer and closer to 0. So you're going to approach 1 as x gets larger and larger. And it looks like that is what is happening with this graph right over here. As x gets larger and larger and larger, y is approaching 1. So once again, we like choice A.